Hello and welcome to my fourth ECG Basics video. In this one, we're going to look at how to calculate the QRS axis. And there are two ways of doing this. We've got the easy way and we've got the hard way. Now I know which one you like the best, but it's really important that we also understand the hard way for those problems that are really difficult to solve when we really want to know what the actual axis really is. Start off with the easy way, and it really is easy. There are only two leads that you need to look at on the 12 lead ECG, lead one and lead two. And we're going to use the thumbs up method. So you've got two thumbs. If, hopefully, if lead one has a QRS complex that's going predominantly upwards, then you're gonna put your left thumb up. If it's going predominantly downwards, so the, the, the S wave is deeper than the R wave, then you're gonna put that thumb down. Imagine that your right thumb is lead two, and again, if the QRS complex is going predominantly upwards, then you're gonna put your thumb up. If the S wave is deeper than the R wave, then you're going to put your thumb down. So let's have a little look at how we use that to calculate the uh, QRS axis. So here we've got lead one, and the, there's an R wave, there's no S wave, it's predominantly upwards, so our left thumb goes up. Lead two, again, you've just got an R wave, there's no S wave, it's predominantly upwards, put your right thumb up as well. And that means we've got a normal axis, both thumbs are up. In this ECG, we look at lead one, and there's an S wave that's at least as deep there as the R wave. It's borderline really, isn't it? But let's just say for the sake of argument that this S wave is a little bit uh, deeper than the R wave is tall. We're going to put our left thumb down. And then we look at lead two and notice that it's predominantly upwards. There's just an R wave. So we're gonna put that thumb up. Now there's an axis deviation here because one thumb is down and one thumb is up. And it goes in the direction of the thumb that remains up. So your right thumb is up, and that means it's right axis deviation in this case. In this ECG, we look at lead one and see that it's predominantly upwards, and that means our left thumb goes up, but in lead two, it's predominantly downwards, so we have a thumb down. Our left thumb remains up, that means it's left axis deviation. So we've worked out how to identify both right axis deviation and left axis deviation. Sometimes you'll see that both lead one and lead two are heading predominantly downwards as a deep S wave, in which case both thumbs will be down. And here you can say, well, this is an extreme axis. It's definitely an axis deviation. I can't tell if it's going more leftwards or rightwards here, but it's just extreme. And you can see in this case, it's because the patient is paced. You can see pacing spikes between those before those QRS complexes. So that's the easy way. Now let's look at the hard way for the times when we really need to know what the actual axis really is. And for this, we're going to have to take a, a detailed look at an ECG. So we're going to need all of the limb leads for this one. Uh, so let, what we're going to do is we're going to work out the point at which that, that's 90 degrees to the axis, all right, perpendicular to the actual axis. Now we know that, know that because with the ECG, when the uh, voltage is heading right towards the relevant lead, we'll get an R wave, right? You know, if, if, you, if the um, axis is going right towards a particular lead, all you'll see is an R wave. If it's going right away from the particular lead, you'll only see an S wave. The problem is sometimes you just see the R wave in several leads. So you've, in this ECG, you can see in lead one and lead ABL, you've just got an R wave. So it's not helpful to use that. It is helpful, however, if you can identify the lead where that's 90 degrees to the axis. So that means that the R wave is exactly as upright as it is downwards. The R wave is as tall as the S wave is deep. And you can see that that happens here in lead two. So this R wave is just as tall as the S wave. That means that the axis is at 90 degrees to that lead. Now it can either be going 90 degrees, degrees to the left or to the right. How do we work out which one it is? Well, let's look at the leads that are going to the left of lead two, AVL here, and there's a positive deflection. So it's going towards it. This means it's going to the left of, of lead two. And you can see it's definitely not to the right because our ABR, of course, is, is heading downwards. So this is a leftward axis and it's 90 degrees to lead two. And that's where we need that diagram we brought up in the first of these ECG basics videos where we looked at where each 
a lead is looking at within the heart. And here you can see lead two is looking at 60 degrees uh, from the, we call it 60 degrees, lead one is at zero, lead two is at 60. So the axis is at 60 degrees from lead two. Uh, that's per, that's uh, It's going leftwards, of course, and that means it's at minus 30 degrees. So 90 degrees away from lead two is minus 30. And that's right at the extreme of a normal axis. So I've marked the normal axis on here with the blue arrow. A normal axis goes from minus 30 to 90 degrees. Anything within that range is normal. And you can see in this case, the, uh, lead to the, the axis is perpendicular to lead two. That's exactly where AVL is. And that's borderline left axis deviation. So that is how we work out the axis of the ECG, the easy way and the hard way. I hope that's been helpful.